boys and girls. Today we're going to read the conclusion of Tornado by Betsy Byers. Chapter 7, The End of the Storm. Pete paused to wipe his eyes. That story always made him cry. It made me cry too. I wiped my eyes on my arm and then wiped my arm on my shirt. Go on, I urged. He took a deep breath to help himself continue. That day, that miserable Saturday, was the saddest, longest day of my life. I couldn't eat. I did my chores without knowing I was doing them. I couldn't play cards after supper. I couldn't sleep. There was an emptiness about my room that matched the one inside me. The whole house seemed empty, the whole outdoors, the whole world. I didn't go around exactly boohooing, but my eyes kept filling up with tears. As soon as I'd wipe one flood away, another would come. I felt like it would be that way for the rest of my life. Sunday passed the same lonely way. Then Monday and Tuesday. On Wednesday, my mother got tired of what she called my moping, and she took me aside to talk some sense into me. You knew you might lose that dog, she said. I nodded. You knew he wasn't yours. I nodded. You've got to stop moping around. You're going to make yourself sick. I nodded. I felt like I already was. Listen, we can get another dog. There are other dogs in the county. I shook my head back and forth. Not for me. On Friday, I was in the barn and I heard a thumping sound. It was a sound that Tornado's tail used to make against the barn door when he wanted to come inside. My eyes flooded. I couldn't help it. I knew there was no thumping. It was a sound I wanted to hear so bad my ears just heard it. There wasn't any thumping. There couldn't be. But the thumping went on. And it really was thumping. It got faster. I wiped my eyes and I looked and Tornado was standing in the doorway. My Tornado was standing in the doorway. Tornado's back, I yelled. Tornado, good boy, good boy. I threw my arms around him. He curved his body the way he did when he was pleased about something and his tail wagged in my face. My daddy came to the door. Tornado's back, I told him. So I see. We don't have to take him back to those people, do we? I tightened my hold on Tornado's neck. Well, I don't rightly know how we could, my daddy said. The man wasn't even polite enough to give me his name. And here's a picture of Tornado in the doorway. That's true. And if they find us, well, the dog knows where we are. He can come over for a visit anytime he takes a mind to. Yes, but I want him to stay. I do too, my daddy said. But if we have to share him with other folks, we'll do it. Half of Tornado is better than none. And my father and I laughed. There was a long pause in the cellar. Did he stay? I liked the good ending. For seven happy years, Pete said. And the people never came and got him? No, of course we didn't make the mistake of taking him to town again. Pete stood up, took his hat off, and put it back on his head. He stretched. I'm going to take another look outside. But before he could open the doors, there was a loud knock. Hello in there, anybody home? It was my father's voice. Storm's over, he cried. We rushed out through the cellar doors and into the fresh air. My mother hugged my daddy. Oh, Link, I was so worried. As soon as my grandmother got up the steps, she hugged him too. Then she gave him a stern look and said, Lincoln, I hope you had the good sense to get in a ditch. Look at me, Mama, can't you tell? Don't anybody else hug me. I'm too muddy to hug. My little brother hung back to speak to Pete. Could Tornado really do a car trick? He could. And did you really truly have a cat named 530? We did. My older brother said, I wish you told the story about Tornado and the rooster. That's my favorite. Next time, Pete promised. Then he winked at me, if there is one. And that's the end of our story. I hope you've enjoyed reading Tornado. Thanks for listening.